Hello, everybody. And it's Tuesday, Pop Teaching Tuesday. We have some really good cards that came out last night in my midnight meditation. And um, let's get started. You know, I there's another thing I want to say before I get started. Um, the energy is really fierce right now. And like I said yesterday, we have a lot of things going on out there. I'm hearing a lot of people tell say the same thing over and over again. I can't handle the people I used to be around. I can't deal with this. And it, it's going to happen. We are shifting. We've shifted timelines already. So each time we shift these timelines, it's going to get different and more and more different. It's like, to me, it's like we're cut in half. It's like we have, it's like um, a line drawn in the sand. It's like half the people see something completely different than what we're seeing. And I can't explain it because we all live in the same world. But uh, I was talking to a friend last night on the phone and she's going through the same thing I'm going through and everybody else is going through. It's like, I just don't want to deal with those type of people anymore. I don't want to deal with the people that are dragging me down. Um, we, yeah, we have to have the negative and the positive the even out, but we don't have to sit there in a negative cesspool of friends and people that are just using, because I think the people that come around that just use are the background people, because if you didn't have anything to use, they wouldn't even be there. So they're not even true, true tribe friend members. They're just there to either teach us a lesson, make us stronger, make us stand up and say, hey, enough is enough and uh, want a better life for ourselves because other people are looking at that going, well, that person isn't doing nothing. That person is just staying in that stagnant little world that they've created thinking it's amazing and they have to live day to day to day to day and, and, and just try to exist. And people that like, like me and other people that are trying to make their little garden of Eden don't want to be around that because that just sucks the life out of everybody. So that's what a lot of people are going through right now. And um, we're going to keep going through that until we weed out the people that we don't want to be around and have the people we do want to be around so yeah let's let's get going on what this reading is gonna tell us today because i'm going to incorporate it a little different today um i'm going to incorporate the cards the way they came out because it was such an amazing reading the way the cards flew out so the first card is the eight of fire and it's change, it's transformation. And yesterday we did, I think we did get a transformation card. Was it? No, maybe not. I don't know, but we're all, tran tra the transformation is just amazing that we're all going through. It's kind of scary sometimes, but it, it, it's, it's a freedom. It's a rebirth. It's what we want. Interaction um, may yield unwelcome changes. Because we're seeing the people that we once thought were our greatest friends, not so much. The Eight of Fire symbolizes transformation through action. Change on a physical level that brings freedom and joy. It is time to start a new job or quit one. It is time to move house because the one you are living in restricts and hampers you. Or is it time to lose a little bit of weight? and increase your mobility and physical fitness. You know, yesterday we had that too, to make like in your day, do one motion different. I'm gonna start doing that, do one motion different. Last night I did a few different motions that I normally don't do. So even if you're walking through the living room, do something different. And so, okay, so somebody thinks you're having a fit. That's okay, you're having a happy fit. You're, you're expanding your mobility and your life. And that's what you need to do. And you need to do it in your time, not somebody else's time. Don't let somebody else push you into weight loss, mobility, how you are, what you're supposed to be. Do it when you're ready, because when you're ready, source will tell you when you're ready. And even though we may be procrastinating it, if we go into a meditation, source will say, get the hell off the couch and go do something. So just listen to your intuition, because right now that's really important. 
Uh, it is time to set yourself free of unnecessary weight, whether it be physical, emotional, or, or psychological, so you can move through life with more ease. Yeah, losing something doesn't mean weight. It means psychological, physical, emotional, whatever you're losing. Um, just don't get lost in the cesspool because that's where you get caught in that vortex and you can't get out. And it's like, God, why is my life this? Why? Because it's revolving. You're, you're just doing it over and over and over again. Um, I heard somebody the other night say that he goes to a bar. He hasn't drank in three years and he goes just to be friendly, just to, to hang out with his friends. And he says, you know what? They're doing the same thing they've done since I quit. They're coming into a bar. They're doing talking about the same crap different day. And they're just revolving. It, it's just, they're just keep doing and doing and doing because it wasn't very fun. I left. So yeah, if you need to make real changes in your life, now is the time to do it. No more thinking, no more planning, no more dreaming. Now is the time to get up off the couch. <laughs> yeah, source will tell you, get up. It's time. Get going. Hey, uh, you over there on the couch, get up and do something and or uh, are you dreaming about this thing that you want to do and you just haven't done it? Go do it. Quit dreaming. Make it happen. Now is the time to make it happen. Now is the time to step into our power. I love that. I should have a t-shirt and it's step into your power. There probably is a t-shirt out there. I should go Google it. Maybe I want it for Christmas. <laughs> okay. Now is the time to get up off the couch, to act and transform yourself or your life, or to take an idea, a possession, something in your life or space and repurpose or transform it. It may be something as simple as painting a room, making it brighter and lighter. Maybe it's time to clean a house for one, from one end to the other, banishing dust and cobwebs, getting rid of all that doesn't serve your purpose or broken and unused regardless this is time of action and change and it is a change that once experienced will bring you a sense of freedom of weight lifted you will feel reborn and will face the future with a renewed sense of purpose regardless of what it is time to transmute one state of being into another it is time to act and to enjoy yeah I agree. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we hang on to and why we hang on to it. I have no idea. I'm going to use me, for instance. I have my baby blanket that my grandmother made, my mom's mom. And I've hung on to it. I've never had children. I've never got to use it. It's uh, a knitted blanket, especially for me. And it, it's old. But I've always kept it beautiful and perfect and new and in a plastic bag and uh, I don't know why I'm just keeping it for to be buried with me basically <laughs> I don't know but my niece is having a little girl and I am going to have the blanket dry cleaned and I am going to send that blanket to my niece for her little girl whether she uses it or not or whether she just keeps it as a keepsake from that little girl's great grandmother because it was special and it was handmade and it was made with love so I'm going to hand it down to my family, but hanging on to it. So I am releasing it. I think we all need to release these things that we're hanging on to. I've seen people hang on to their mother's clothes and their grandmother's this. If it is something very, very special, yes, hang on to it. But if it's like me, like a baby blanket, what am I ever going to do with it? I'm going to die and it's just going to go to goodwill. So I would rather it be handed down to the generation that might have enjoy it might say my great grandma made this blanket from love for my aunt you know and it was handed down to me so yeah I think things like that are very special because it is like a perfect blanket it's not shabby ripped or anything um I used it once years ago and that was it <laughs> so yeah I think we need uh we're blocking ourselves when we hang on to this stuff and just hang on and hang on like a bungee cord because what we got with that was the sun. And this is a major arcana card. And appreciate your deserved success in this special time of rest and recuperation. Enjoy feeling safe and appreciated. The harmony that is around you. Growth, children, joy, protection, holiday success, commitment. Yeah, 
Uh, the holidays are coming and people tend to get very sentimental during the holidays. We all do. It's just a time of love and happiness. And uh, when we go through it, sometimes it's a tearjerker. But I wanted, I wanted to incorporate the practical magic cards because of the way they came out, because they resonated with the cards that were pulled in front of them. Because I always, I, when I do a meditation, I do these cards first, the, the dreams of Gaia. And then I complement them with a the tarot for a confirmation. But then I've been pulling the practical magic afterwards. Well, as I was, I thought, you know, I'm just going to do it a little different. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to pull that and see what comes out. Well, the card that came out after the sun and after this one, which is basically transformation and fire was the trans transformation of life. Number 16 transformations. Now there is no coincidence and there's a flash. There is no coincidence and what it's telling us. He has his cauldron. He's got his whatever he's putting in that. He's 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 transforming. He's something new is on the way, so embrace it. Despite your hesitations, trust your own growth. Reveal the beautiful butterfly emerging from within. The cauldron of Serdwin symbolizes transformation and rebirth, as well as the components of Awen. I think it's Awen. Yeah, Awen. Inspiration, creativity, and wisdom. It beckons you to dive in and soak up the magic of change. Oh, I love that. I didn't even read these cards last night. I just seen them fly out. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, do we have a reading tomorrow? Oh, there is a Welsh. Okay, Welsh in origin. Awan has been described as the flowing spirit the poetic inspiration of the bards and the energy that flows when we create art, tell a story, divi divine from the symbol symbols of nature or reason out philosophies. It's the knowing, sensing, and feeling of wisdom and the spirit of Drudry. Drudry? Drew I don't know what that is. The symbol of Awan is thought to have been in, invented by Lala La, La, Lolo Morgnon, an 18th century Welsh and antique, antiquian poet and literally forger who reinvented Druidism for a new age in an effort to reclaim and protect Welsh culture. It has been adopted by many Druids and has power today because it has been imbued with meaning by those who use it. The symbols of Awan is made up of three rays of sun, the left being the female force of nature, the right being male, and the center one, the balance of the two. They are topped by three dots, the points of light from which the sun rays emanate. According to the order of bards, Ovates and Druids, these dots represent the three aspects of deity and the triad of sunrise. The three points where the sun rises on the sol solstice and the equinox, others believe the three lines relate like other triple patterns to other spiritual trinities, such as land, sea, sky, body, mind, spirit, or love, wisdom, and truth. Wow, <clears throat> that's really interesting i like that the strength and grace of reinvention and the Im immense power of transformation often people say you've changed as an insult as that as though it's a bad thing but it's actually a wonderful compliment it shows that you have learned more about yourself and the world face trials with courage and emerge from them stronger and wiser you may have sought out hidden truths, listened to new perspectives, and been gifted in turn. 
with new wisdom and understanding, with the heart and wings of a butterfly ready to soar. When this card comes to you, it's a message that you're in a time of change. An opportunity is being offered to you. If you want to have the courage to accept it, embrace this change. Open the door when you hear a knock and walk through it. Who knows what realm of possibilities that doorway will lead to and just how deeply it will transform you and your life for the better. Don't turn it down out of fear or allow caution to hold you back. Find your voice, speak your truth, challenge yourself and others, educate yourself, be all the wonderful things you know you can be and take advantage of all that is present. Dive in so you can break out of your comfort zone and exceed the limits you've placed on yourself. Connect with your own heart and inner wisdom and allow yourself to be seen. To be heard, to be you. Discard that no longer fits and what is no longer true to you. It may not be easy, but it will be worth the change. Change can be hard. There may be growing pains. And sometimes you won't see the gift in a difficult experience until later. Some people may feel threatened to or left behind. They might take your effort to change as a personal rebuke, a criticism of life, of their life choices, and a reflection of their own failings. But that is not your problem. You are only responsible for yourself and your own growth and become an even happier, better version of you. It is not about anyone else, nor would a true friend want to limit you and keep you small. So be brave. You find yourself journeying into the dark woods, but have faith. Have faith that what you lo will learn within them will change you deeply and transform you and your life for the better. Don't be afraid of going deeper, of expanding and learning and growing. Okay, and emerging, changing from experience, you'll gain skills, substance, and power, magic, and a sense of self. The beauty of transformation is that it is ongoing. It never ends. You may be several different people before you become the, the you that you truly want to be, but every one of those selves along the way is an important part of you and your evolving consciousness and should be honored and celebrated. Embrace change, step with confidence onto the new path and walk it your way. And when someone tells you that you've changed, smile with gratitude and thank them for the compliment. I love that. Oh my God. What card? I mean, fire change transformation the sun i knew when these cards come out how they came out is how i needed to read them wow i needed that too because i've had a lot of people tell me i've changed i i you have totally changed what happened to you yeah i did i i seen a lot of uh perceptions that years ago i looked at and thought was something different and it was something i didn't expect when i got older we also got the 10 of air a time of independence say goodbye to the public persona no longer bound by a, an, another's opinion walk your own path yeah. now is the time to walk our own path humans are paradoxical by nature, see and know your potential. The self is whole. Time to grow up and leave home. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be good. I am going to read a little bit differently on this card because I'm feeling something different about this card. Something's in the air. <laughs> Uh, the process of individual individualization leads to becoming oneself, to stepping away from the external forces that we believe define us to become an independent being who recognizes and embraces their own uniqueness and individuality. 
it is about removing the mask we present to the public so that we are liked and respected and accepted. The face we wear so we fit in and belong no longer are our, our, our public face and private life very different. We, rep we present our face to the world and if it is not liked, then so be it. If it makes us a black sheep in a flock of white sheep, then so be it. We'd rather be honest and accepted by the few than be what family or society expects. Uh, individual Individualization ex is being who we are meant to be as opposed to being the person society tells us we should be. It is breaking free from caring about what people think about us because we love who we are and what we do with our life. We are free, liberated, because we are not bound by others' opinions of us or actions, the constraint of society or the impediment of our past. Uh, it represents one who allows other thoughts and opinions to define and shape them instead of moving forward and becoming an independent being. They have allowed others to determine their path and shape their reality. They have become afraid to think or speak for themselves and instead allow others to dominate. They do so because they are afraid of great unknown and of what life will bring if they choose to defy convention, break with tradition, and stand alone. The ten of air signifies a need for this these issues to be addressed. It is time for you to grow up and leave home and step through the door into the great unknown. It is time to think for yourself, speak for yourself and determine your own direction. The future longs to greet you, but it cannot if you present your if your present is being determined by everyone else but you. Yeah, that is something that all, a lot of us do. I'm not I'm guilty of that too. Uh Because the one we got with that was the Eight of Cups. Change. Follow your heart and go forward. Now, I need a sip of something. I'm dry mouth. Oh, I love this card. And when I got this deck, I seen this card. And I, I didn't read it. I couldn't wait to read it. But today I get to read it because it came out. It's 31. Seek balance. Overwhelm. Now, this came out. This one first. The Ten of Air. And then this one came out. The Change. And then this one came out. So that's how they fell. And that's how we're going to read them. Overwhelmed and juggling too many things right now, clarify and prioritize to bring peace and harmony to your life. In a world of stress and confusion of constant juggling, commitments, work, workloads, and self-imposed pressures, balance can seem always just out of reach. You know you'll work on what you need to do just as soon as you finish this project. Make that deadline. Catch up on outside commitments. Hear back from that person, but you can't wait. For the perfect time because it will never come you need to take steps to deal with the overwhelm or you'll drown in all the busyness when this card appears it's a sign of just how overwhelmed you really are there is a disparity in your current situation it could be an external imbalance such as a power struggle or an impossible work expectation or it might be an internal imbalance, like a lack of energy, a health problem, or overcommitment issues. Whatever it is, it's time to take action. One of the key lessons is that no is a complete sentence. You don't have to explain why you can't do something. Come up with an elaborate excuse or justify your decision. Nor should you feel guilty for honoring yourself and your time and energy. There aren't enough hours in the day to do everything you have to do, let, let alone want to do. So you need to figure out what is more important and focus on that before anything else. Remember that you're a grown-up. You have 
ultimate power over what you do and don't do and how you allocate your time. It can help to discover what works best for you. If you're able to switch between projects throughout the day, brilliant. If you need to section off separate days for separate projects and not let them bleed into each other, that's fine too. Can you easily delegate tasks or is this your major struggle? Are you most productive? I know a lot of people won't because they, they think that they do it just perfect and they want it done their way. So if you're doing that and you're over, it's because you won't let anybody else do anything. And that's not a good way to be. So can you easily delegate tasks or is this your major struggle? Are you most productive in the morning? And if so, should do the most pressing things then? Or does it suit you better to tick off the lower priority task first, then dive into the important stuff when you're ready? Feel a sense of accomplishment. Or are you more creative at night and need to factor that into your schedule? How much of your overwhelm is because you're too shy or too people pleasing or turn down requests for your time or that you feel obligated to help others at the expense of your own needs. You can't help others from an empty well and people will respect you more if you set limits and respect your own boundaries. Remind yourself you can only do what you can do. If a task is not achievable or a time frame is too short, say so. Renegotiate the deadline. Explain what you can do in the time available and possible options for other ways to meet it that won't lead to unbearable stress on you. Often the other person is unaware of how unreasonable the request is and would welcome a discussion and a solution to the problem. Be gentle on yourself. Don't beat yourself up over perceived inadequacies. Everyone is doing their best. Forgive yourself for apparent failures and allow the same for others. Give yourself space. If you need to withdraw from the world for a while to do that, if you don't have the energy to socialize or to take a new project, politely decline. Being able to say no and set healthy boundaries has never been more important. You know, <clears throat> the last couple of days, the healthy boundaries have come up. And I really think that is something that people all need to work on. Don't worry about the small things or blow up minor incidents into huge and unnecessary dramas. It's easy to overact and let minor things consume your energy and precious time or to procrastinate over unimportant tasks as you seek a dopamine hit to soothe your stress. Focus and re-clarify. Get clear on your goals and remove extraneous duties. There are more distractions these days and people are more easily distracted. A terrible combination the lack of attention on the present moment and the task at hand can affect your well-being, lead to frustration and pull you away from what you are trying to achieve. Ask yourself, will this matter in five years? If not, it doesn't matter now. Ask, is this getting me closer to my dream or dragging me further from the finish line? If it's the latter, pivot and refocus. These are extraordinary, strange and overwhelming times. You need to figure out what you can control and let go of the rest for your own peace of mind. I love that card because we're all going through a lot of helping everybody else, not helping us. Uh, people see us this way. I got to be this way. I can't say no. Oh my God. I got to the point where I don't even give an excuse now. I just say no and no is no because I don't have to give an excuse if I don't want to do something. Easy as that. So that. So far, this has been an amazing reading. And I love this card that came out. And this is another uh, Seven of Air. And let's see. Yeah, we've got some really good. We've got two air cards and a fire. We got a fire and two air. So, yeah, that's, uh, it's not what we believe, but how we believe. Lift others up. Does what you believe make you kinder? Are you willing to lose another for your beliefs? There are many ways, not just your way. Educate, don't indoctrinate. Seek a kind approach, moderate fundamental beliefs. Um, this card represents a need to step back and moderate any extreme or fun, funda, fundamentalism, fundamentalist behavior. You do not do your cause 
any justice by following a fundamentalist path. The only thing this achieves is to make those around you who do not share your beliefs angry and re resistant to the change you are attempting to impose on them. Instead of opening minds, you can close them tighter than a steel trap. When the seven of air appears in your reading, seek a gentler, more moderate approach. Educate instead of trying to indoctrinate. Don't use cruel and punishing methods. They never work. All they do is perpetuate the paradigm that you seek to end. Um, I always look at this. this. This is how I tell this story. And this is how I see this card. This man is beautiful. He's got feathers. He's got the dagger. He's got a book. He he is, I, I'm feeling a shaman. He is beautiful. He's got the white wings. Now, bring him in our 3D world, okay? Bring him where we are. And let him walk into a church, a church that's supposed to be open to the world, a church that's supposed to be forgiving and loving and, and accepting all, okay? And let's take the wings away. Let's let him walk in exactly how he is. What would they think? They would look at him as maybe evil because he's got dark, he's got a sword, he's got feathers, he's got a book. We don't know if it's the Bible or what it is, but he doesn't look like something that would fit in to our 3D matrix in our image. But are we writing this, his story by the way he looks? Are we judging him by his cover? Or are we opening him up and asking him about himself and learning the truth? We have to think about that when we're looking at people. We see all kinds of people in this world that are so different than us. Let's say blue hair, piercings, tattoos, uh, whatever they, you know, their book, their their page, their front cover. And we're, we're writing the story already. Oh my God, they've got to be on drugs and they live at home in their basement. You know, we're, we're writing their little story in our mind. Guess what? Their story is probably so opposite than what we just wrote because we assumed we have to, we have to bring ourselves into balance. Juggling too much. Because we're changing. And with the air comes, you know, we, we've had air. Uh, we've had fire. Uh, we have to balance everything out. And that gentleman uh, speaks that. So we got that one. And the next one we got with the tarot on that one was loyalty. Uh, it was the Knight of Pentacles. And hard grafted may not be exciting, but the results will bring you great uh, fulfillment. The knight is not dashing. He's slow and steady, planning his moves with care. He may not be charming, but he's loyal and trustworthy. So any offer he makes can be taken seriously. He, appear, he often appears in readings to show business investment and projects that have good future potential in property. He is associated with choosing the perfect home. This is the right time to be serious about decisions and long-term future events. Yeah, that, that was a good, um, that was a good card for that one. And it is about loyalty, but we also got, you know, that was interesting. We've got the air and He's beautiful and we're judging him. And then we've got loyalty because he is probably very loyal, but we wouldn't know it by the way he looks. The one we got was ground yourself, number one, Lady Earth. And she is all grounded. She is so there. And with this reading that we've got, we have to ground ourselves. This is a very important step in our process and this says connect with the magic of nature and the healing energy of the earth to feel strong and grounded and move forward with strength and purpose 
Grounding yourself is about balancing the flow of energy within and without, keeping your body and spirit integrated and maintained your connection to nature and the earth. Being grounded physically will make you feel strong emotional. emotionally. You're better able to stand in your own power, be full, present in the moment, and more capable of dealing with the challenges of life. Grounding support mental, physical, and emotional health by increasing your focus, decreasing stress, improving sleep, calming the mind, and encouraging a true sense of self. It also helps you develop your intuition, you which requires you to be grounded as a base for your spirit to fly from, as with a nur nurture your connection with others. Follow your life's purpose and achieve your highest potential. Drawing this card indicates that you're a little out of balance and need to reconnect with the earth and ground yourself back into your body and state of flow with nature. Stress and overwork has the power to unground you, as does performing too much meditation or spiritual work without integrating your insight into the physical and embodying the lessons you take from them. Jet lag, alcohol, and other conscious alternative substances and activities can also leave you ungrounded, dislocated from the harmony of the earth and the full expression of all parts of your life. Some of the signs that you're out of balance and in need of grounding, including feeling lightheaded, scattered, overwhelmed, forgetful, clumsy, headachey, unfocused, easily distracted, panic, depressed, lethargic, manic, anxiety, or spaced out. But don't worry, it's a simple issue to address and you'll soon be back in your body, calm, present, unshakable, and ready to translate your spiritual insight into physical action. When you're grounded, you are energetically rooted to the earth. You are able to withstand any storms that try to sway you, and you can allow your spirit to fly free for a while. Knowing it is anchored safely and securely to the physical world, being grounded also helps you feel connected to your authentic self, secure and at peace with you. Who you are, you are integrated, solid in your convictions and prepared to stand your ground with confidence and integrity. Grounding work is a simple way to maintain physical health and well-being, release negative energies and draw in positive and empowered yourself, empower yourself to cope more easily with your work, your magic and your life. The gift of groundedness is a wonderful form of self-care and self-love. Bestow it upon yourself right now and whenever you need, most need it. Uh, yeah, um, a lot of us are not getting grounded enough. And I know in the north, it's cold right now and it's chilly in Florida. So people are not getting out in the world. And I think maybe buy a plant, maybe buy a plant and sit beside your, your desk. We have plants in here that I can go, even if it's cold, I can go play with a leaf or rub it or talk to it or something. Because uh, the next couple cards that we got that came out, we have no more oracles, but we did have a couple tarots that popped out and I kept them because... Um, I think something's going on with some people. And I know in my world, there's there's drama all the time. Eight of Swords came up restriction. Get practical and see that you are in control of your own future, regardless of what others think. You can free yourself by being less tolerant of the demands of others. People tend to demand a lot from people. And the people can only give so much they can give. And then it gets to the point where they feel used and abused. And then it's not a happy place to be. And I see people going through that. I talk to people that are going through that. And I've been through that. And I feel they're, I feel what they're going through. Because we also got that second night. We got a, the Knight of Pentacles and we got the Knight of Swords drama. And that came after restriction. Avoid being drawn into drama more than it is necessary. Try not to take this setback personally. It's their fight, not yours. Uh, holidays bring a lot of drama also. It's not just every family's and friend's beautiful time of the year. Uh, Christmas can be very, holidays can be very drama filled. Let's just put it that way. So that was a really good um, reading for all of us today so far because it gives us some insight. Now, we got the Angels and Ancestors Oracle card, and 
You know, what's interesting about the grounded to earth card that we just got. We also got earth mother feel loved and comforted. So this is telling me, and I love, look, at she's pregnant with the earth. She's got the butterflies. She is in meditation. She's got the crescent moon on her forehead. She's got the earth below her. She's got the earth wrapped around her. And she's got the earth above her with the butterflies, the grapes, the leaves, the beauty. And that is an amazing card. Allow yourself to be cherished. Earth mother is protecting you with a shield of love and light. Earth Mother is the feminine counterpart to Sky Father. It's interesting. We had Sky Father a while back, and we had a lot of air signs today, and Earth. It's auspicious to receive this card because in the eyes and Earth of Earth of Earth Mother, you are her child, and she is highly protective of her baby. I hope that it's not interfering. He's pressure washing the camper today. He's got the hose out there because we're getting ready to put our Christmas lights up. So I'm hearing static in the background because of the hose. So I'm hoping it's not interfering with my voice because sometimes it will blop background noise out, but it'll make me kind of. So I'm going to reread that again because that was kind of loud. Earth Mother is the female counterpart to Sky Father. It, it's auspicious to receive this card because in the eyes and heart of Earth Mother, you are her child, and she is highly protective of her baby. That's true. And will give you everything you need to grow and expand. Earth Mother is only covered by leaves in this card, showing the vulnerability of the earth. Every day she experiences challenges that she has to adapt to and overcome. Her energy represents represented by the symbol of the pagan triple teacher, maiden mother and crone behind her can help you adapt as the change of life comes your way you may have felt overwhelmed or out of control emotionally recently but you are now moving back to your natural set center and that will bring you to a place of clarity and openness if you have felt ungrounded know the earth mother is here to root you and help you regain your sense of strength. You may not feel like a child, but in the eyes of the divine, you are a child of light. And it's important you know that you feel loved. If you have had challenges with your mother or with being a mother yourself, know that the energies of mother healing are well with you to help clear any ancestral blockages that are preventing you from making the sacred love connection. You are being guided to make choices that are based on love. Ah, oh, I love that card. With that, we got the mirror guardian. Take time to reflect. We have, to, you know, these holiday seasons, we all know that they're hectic and crazy. We have to take time to reflect. And not over, like they said, too much meditation, too much of anything can cause an unbalance. So we have to balance ourselves out right now. Take some time to reflect on your strengths and challenges and how far you've come. Recognize your gifts. Angels accept you just the way you are, even when you are going through a challenging time. They still hold you in the highest esteem. The mirror... The mirror guardian, a female angel looking into the mirror of life, invites you to witness your spiritual strength and beauty, to see yourself as angels do. The mirror represents the fact that your core belief and ideas are in fact what is reflected back to you by your world. Your life is one big mirror of how you feel within, and the mirror guardian helps you recognize that when this card appears, you are being invited to take some time to see where you are right now um you know i think we should look in the mirror a little bit and uh see where we are right now you are a beautiful being who has surmounted so many challenges and expanded in so many ways your angels are now guiding you to take inventory of your life 
to take the time to note all of your recent experiences and challenges you have surmounted, the strength you have developed, and the lessons you have learned. Your angels want you to reflect on your strengths and in particular those aspects of yourself that you feel have not been acknowledged by others. Often your self-approval where it's due and know that when you give yourself credit, others will be able to as well. Uh, yeah, I think we have to start not second guessing ourselves. And we all do that. We all second guess ourselves a lot. And that's not a good way of being. And that kind of reminds me of this next card. And it's a three. It's 21. It's a three. It's Trinity. And this card, I think, is kind of recognize despair as an opportunity within it, you will find the gift of awakening. And if you look at this card, she is looking away from the light. She's not looking in through the window. She's not looking out. She's looking back. I'm getting... I'm getting something with this card. Uh, let me read it and maybe I'll talk about it. I'm getting a download. Okay. Um, hidden in the darkest of night, in the great greatest depths of despair and desperation lies the gift of awakening. Do not pass judgment on or denounce it as a bad or dreadful moment in your life. Instead, use this time with all its darkness as a spur to action. Make use of every low in your life to create a new beginning. Powerful emotions contain the most powerful magic. Use them for, for celebration, commitment, committing yourself to them and developing from the innermost strength a great light, an inner supernova. Use this transformation power to create something you desire, something new or even bold or daring. These times are perfect for creating a new, wonderful future. See them as a chance to raise yourself up and grow beyond yourself and your lower self. Unhappiness will not devour or destroy you. It will take you to higher dimensions. This card leads to one of your darkest places. Remember it, or you might be in the middle of such a place right now. It is painful, of course, but this pain comes to you as a friend. It will make you wiser, more awake, more aware. Learn from it. Do not neglect this opportunity to recognize something great that lies hidden behind all the des despair and drama. We did get the drama card and we got the restriction card in the tarot. And I feel somebody, I feel the energy from this card that, that someone is really having a hard time. Your helpers for the next 21 days is the power animals, the leopard, the herbal essence is the elmi, the healing crystal is green jade, and the number is three. I got a real sinking feeling in my gut right now with this card. Indicate the, the number three indicates that now is a good time to take care of your soul families, both in this world and in others. Make contact and tell them that you love and need them. They will hear you. You will find strength, healing, and answers among those closely connected to you. This number teaches you to look at everything, to become an observer, and wisdom will come. Number three's energy field brings about diversity, creativity, creative energy, or overcoming a du of duality, and understanding and seeing the world of the divine. Um, I'm going to say what I'm feeling about this card right now. Um, this is a lonely space and I know the holidays can be very lonely for some people and they're looking back so they're looking at the past and they're reminiscing but it's sad what me and my husband are doing this year and and I'm going to suggest this um my ring is my my ring is, is purple it's it's indigo it's indigo um it's I'm really picking up some really sad, heavy 
energy from this card. Somebody, I got a lump in my throat. Somebody is really going through some some really hard times. They're looking back. They're remembering and they're missing everything that they had. They have, they don't have that anymore. They they don't have that happiness. They need to make that happiness. You can make that happiness. Even if you're alone, when you start to meditate and you start to go through the dark night of the soul and you connect with source, mother earth, God, whatever you call our, the highest power, the I am, when you connect, that love is all around you. You are never alone. Even in the darkest moments of her being completely alone and looking back, she's never alone. She's got all her ancestors. See that light? She just won't look at it. She can't get beyond what she's hanging on to. And a lot of us can't. We hang on to things like bungee cord. I've said that before. It You can't. You can hang on to the past of the beautiful memories, but don't hang on to the beautiful memories that you can't, there's a flash, that you can't create. You can create new beautiful memories. Me and my husband decided to do some new traditions this year. Um, we don't do any really, we do some traditions, you know, he does the pork and sauerkraut for New Year's and I don't, I don't like pork and sauerkraut, but he does things like that and, and um, I don't know how many traditions I probably do that we learn, but we're going to do a, a couple new traditions this year. Um, I'm going to do a message in the bottle in the tree. I do, I have a little bird's nest in my tree that I've always done. My mother didn't do it. Um, I put a little bird's nest with a little bird in the tree. Uh, it's for new beginnings. And, um, I have always had that, but this year I'm going to do, I haven't told my husband, he did his tradition. He he, he did decided that we're going to have um, Bailey's Irish cream. We're going to have some hot cocoa for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And that's like a new tradition for us, something new. And I'm going to do um, a message in the tree. And um, every year I'm going to do a new message and put it in the tree. And every year we'll reread it and see the new message. And it, it will be something new that we do um, for our Christmas and you can do the same thing. Write a message and put it in your tree. And then next year, read that message and see where you were. You know, it's kind of like a little Christmas time capsule. And um, I think we should all do something new, something different, completely out of the box. And uh, this year, we we decided that we're going to make Kahlua brownies. I haven't made them in 15 years. And we're going to do some Kahlua. We don't drink. We're not drinkers. I make homemade Kahlua. Um we like like Bailey's Irish cream and maybe, you know, a hot chocolate once in a while or something like that. But we're going to go out of the box and do some different things. The one year when we first got here to Florida, we went to the beach for Christmas because it's just me and my husband. We ate our dinner and we went to the beach because I wanted to see the beach again and we had just got here. So make something new. But I'm seeing somebody and I feel your sadness. I'm, I'm, I really hope that you get out of this stage because you are loved and if you need anything, just reach out. I'm there. I'm, I'm, my, my email's there. Um, I will talk. No problems. Okay. Now that I'm really, that energy's really got me going. Um, oh, I love everybody. And you know what? I'm with you in spirit. We're all one consciousness. So you're not completely alone. I realize you feel alone, but you're not completely alone. And I'm going to save this one for last, the Divine Master, because we got a beautiful card. We got actually a couple of really amazing cards. Um, we got the Gateway of Light activation. We got the Angelic Frequency. Angels are here. You are safe and uh, potent connection. Uh, yeah. What did I just say? Um, our angels are here all around us and our spirit guides. You're never alone. You may feel alone in this 3D matrix, but you're not alone. And you're not alone in the 3D matrix. You can reach out to anybody. And any um, if they are light workers, if they are true light workers like I am, they will reach out and they will talk to you. And they will help you through this time. I will help anyone I can. I'm always there for someone. There was the flash. The angelic frequency is the energy of angels. 
and the angelic kingdom, which is aligned to serve definition, devotion, authenticity, and love. When this frequency comes to us, it's because the gateway of our heart has aligned with it. We've essentially become an angel upon the earth. Angels are the heartbeats of source. And so when we're in touch with the angelic realm, we're also connected to the heart of God. I really love that. This card features a being of light. The streams of light surround it are the angelic frequencies pouring down to light up your life. This image also unblock, unlocks our soul memories of our guardian angel. Before we were in this life, we danced across the midnight sky. And as the universe follows the law of attraction, our angel was attracted to us because our likeness was also in them. So we became connected. And since then, our angels have been with us through every lifetime and every experience. Angels are drawing close at this time, so be open to signs and synchronicities that confirms this. It's important for you to know that through your action, choices, and service, you have upgraded your spiritual connection and your frequency. Rejoice, for you may be rewarded with abundance and blessings at this time. You have been making choices that are not just for your own greater good, but for that of all those around you. Your guardian angel is with you now, helping you remember your in infinite power and potential. Reach for the stars and trust that all the efforts you have been making, both internally and externally, will bring blessings and opportunities. The path you are on is aligned to your highest good and the support you need is there for you. You are cherished by angels. Yes, you are. We are all cherished by angels and our guardians are watching over us. That's a beautiful card. This was a beautiful reading, and I knew it was going to be. I am getting goosebumps right now, literally, see, with this card. Mother Mary, miraculous encounter, divine experience. Do not be afraid of being powerful. Boom. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a simple woman with a divine mission to bring sacred love into the world. At the time of her death, she was assumed into heaven by the angels. It is for this reason that she is considered the queen of the angels, and her presence magnetizes the energy of miracles and the presence of angels. Yeah, that confirms that our angels are all around us all the time. One of the most important lessons of Mary's life was when Archangel Gabriel brought her the message that she was going to be the mother of Christ. When Gabriel appeared to her, she heard the message, do not be afraid, for I am an angel of the Lord. This wasn't necessarily telling her not to be afraid because she was having a spiritual vision, more not to be afraid of being this powerful. Mary's experience reminds all women that it's safe to be powerful and gifted. She is now dedicated to spreading this message and is the leader of a group of angels dedicated to world peace. Wow, that's deep, I love that. You are having spiritual visions and miraculous encounters at this time. Don't be afraid of your gifts. They are God-given abilities to help you remember who you are and where you have come from. If you have been wondering about the spiritual significance of certain encounters or experience, know, know that the main message the universe is trying to tell you. To, and to get you is that you are not alone and you are a significant br bringer of light to the world. Your psychic and spiritual abilities have been awakened by some sort of shift in your life. This could have been an overwhelm, overwhelming, challenging, or emotional moment, but it has set you on a path to remember that you can heal and help others. Angels of peace are here now to guide you on your way to harmony in all aspects of your world. Wow. That answered
the question and the feeling that I had when I got this card. Someone is hurting. A lot of people right now are hurting out there. And you're not alone. You have angels and you have Mary. And ground yourself. Even if you can't, it's cold by a plant. Get connected. Look into the mirror, guardian, and do a reflection time on yourself and what you've learned and where you've come and how, how far you've come. Because you'll see something different when you step back and really look into it. You'll see that you've come a long way and you're a very powerful person. Yes, you've had trials. Yes, you may not have anybody right now at the season. Reach out to someone. There's a lot of people that don't have anybody. You're not alone. You can make that soul family connection and have that connection. Um, I want to tell you a little thing of what happened to us yesterday. This, this is what I'm talking about, soul family. Um, everybody that has watched me has heard the story of Lucky and the dream that I had about Lucky. I noticed a lot of my dreams, I'm always in a foreign land. Uh, people are speaking foreign languages that in the 3D matrix, I may not understand, but in my dream time, I understand completely. I'm not talking in the, the uh, language, but they are. And somehow I'm communicating with them. Um, I was in a dream and I was lost one time and I was looking for my friends and I was in a foreign country and it was dark. It was getting dark and I was getting scared. And I met a merchant and he was a wonderful older man. He was so happy and so loving. And I told him in my language what was going on that I was lost. And somehow he understood. Um, and he grabbed me by the arm and he patted my arm and he took me to where I needed to go. And as we laughed, we really didn't know what each other was saying, but we, we were laughing and we were having a great time as we were walking to the place where my friends were in the stream and he took me back to safety. I didn't know who the man was. Uh, I didn't understand his, his voice when he was trying to tell me his name. So in the dream, I called him Lucky. Um, and I remember that dream. I don't even have to look in my dream journal. It was a couple years ago I had that dream. I don't even have to look in my dream journal to remember that dream. It was so uh, there. Um, after I had that dream, it was probably maybe a year, year and a half after I had that dream, uh, a gentleman appeared in our life, Blanco. His name is Blanco. And he lives right around the corner, and him and his wife. And he's got a little kind of farm type thing. Um, and he goes past our house every day, going to the grocery store to get, he gets day old, whatever from the grocery store, like my father used to for his ducks and stuff. So he kind of re reminded me of my father, but he's Cuban and he has, he's lived here for 40 years, but he, he doesn't, he doesn't speak a lot of English, just minimum. So he showed up one day and my husband was outside in the yard and he, he asked my husband, they did like a, a you know trying to figure out what each other was saying and he wanted a banana tree my husband has a lot of banana trees and he wanted a banana tree and my husband ended up digging him up and giving him a banana tree and he was so thankful banana banana is what he was saying so he was so thankful that my husband gave him a banana tree and they started a friendship gradually as lucky was passing lucky would stop and he would start talking to Donnie. Well, I wasn't out there. I didn't talk to Lucky. I didn't know Lucky. I seen him out there talking to my husband. And uh, my husband gave him and his wife a bird bath, a glass bird bath. My husband made a lot of bird baths and he gave him them. And he was so excited. So it was this friendship that started to grow between Blanco and my husband, not me. I had never met Blanco. I'd just seen him in the yard. So one day uh, he started bringing us duck eggs and chicken eggs um, and big buckets of them. And I, my, I went out and I thanked him and he, he was happy about that. And we started going online and finding different Spanish um, words that we could use that he'd understand. And he, he tries to understand the English words. He, he tries hard. So 
this friendship started and it progressed and it progressed. And one day I was out there and I was talking to Blanco and he did this and he grabbed my arm and I looked at Bonnie when he left and I said, Bonnie, that is love. That I'm going to cry. That was the gentleman that helped me in my dream a year and a half ago. I recognized the movements of him. I recognized how he talked and who he was. And I said, Donnie, that's lucky. So ever since I told Donnie about the dream and that was lucky, I call him, we call him lucky. So lucky comes all the time. And during the hurricane, lucky has a car and a truck. He's got an old 95 pickup truck with the wings, you know, the old fashioned. And um, we were using lucky's truck every day. Lucky would stop after he went to the grocery store and say, my truck, your truck, you family. So we would use it, we would drop him off and use his truck as long as we needed it to run, do our errands and run around during the hurricane. And it, it was a blessing. And we, our fence got blown down and Lucky stopped and he had an extra piece of wooden fence. Wooden fence is expensive. It's like $50 a sheet thing. So he brought this piece of wooden fence up and gave us a piece of wooden fence that Arthur broke. And then we bought shingles. And for the roof of our shed, and Lucky had some extra shingles, and he brought some extra shingles in case we needed them. So Lucky has been doing things, and we've been doing things for Lucky. I make him my special, my special zucchini bread with love, and I give him you know things like that. And I go out now and hug him and say gracias and amigo and I love you, amore, and the things that we're learning, you know, uh, we're family. He keeps saying family. Well, during the hurricane, our microwave got zapped by water that was leaking in. So the microwave was sitting outside. And he come by about two weeks ago and he says, me, microwave, microwave. Donnie says, it's, it's done. It's burnt inside. So he took it. I thought, I think he was trying to fix it like it was a, a fuse or something, but it was, it was zapped inside. It was no good. So we haven't had a microwave, you know, for a couple months now, and we miss our microwave, but we haven't had a microwave. So yesterday, Lucky stops in, and he's trying to tell my my husband's washing the the camper to put the Christmas lights up, and he's trying to tell him something, and he was trying to say microwave, and Donnie says we don't have a microwave. You took it. We don't have it. It's broke. He says I'll be back. I'll be back. Forty five minutes. So. Donnie just keeps washing the camper. I was in here. I wasn't paying attention. Next thing you know, Lucky's beeping the horn and he's back. So I go out and I had had a half, uh, me and Donnie had a couple pieces of zucchini, zucchini bread. I had just made and I just stuck it in the freezer because we weren't eating it all. So I grab it thinking I'll just give Lucky the rest of the zucchini bread. There's only two pieces missing. And I'll go out and give him the zucchini bread. Well, he opens his trunk and he has a brand new microwave. He went to Walmart, bought us a beautiful microwave, brand new, uh, and bought a warranty plan for us. And he said, present, you, family. <laughs> Me and my husband stood out in the driveway crying, literally, with the love that we felt for this man. And he's a stranger. But he is family. And that's what soul families do. You don't have to ask them. They know. So, whew, I'm not a public crier too much. I cry to myself a lot, but you can feel the love from me. That was special. Whew. Okay. This reading. Touch my heart. You touch my heart. And um, I really love you all very much. And, okay. Hang on. Okay. I had to stop it for a minute. I had to get my grip. It was very, my heart was, whew, felt very, very love, very much love, very emotionally love. But this other card, is weighing heavy on my heart. And I know a lot of people don't have the same connection to people of that. And you will find the soul tribe that you that you need because we are, we have found beautiful people. 
So with that said, I just want to tell everybody, I love you so much and may every step in your journey be magical and may your Christmas and holidays be magical. And you know what? Just be you. <laughs>